and welcome back to the program. I hope you're all doing well, as I am fantastic today, and I hope you all had a most excellent Thanksgiving, if you're here in the United States with us. Mine was enjoyable, got to do a little bit of lounging around, and that's always good, because I have a very busy schedule. But today, we're going to embark on a little bit of a journey. This is a project that I've been thinking about for a long period of time, and well, it's a long range whoop. Love me tiny whoops, it's tiny whoop season, but there is one serious problem with a good whoop, and that's range. They're lacking in both transmitter length, and they're also lacking in video. And if you're doing gorilla whooping, well, there's no room for weak signal. I mean, you need everything top notch. Last year I went down in a kitchen, oh, it was an open kitchen too, in a country club. And fail safe, whoop went down, got kicked all around, ended up underneath the freezer, staff didn't even realize it was there. Uh, and that's no good when you're hitting these spots and you're doing a little bit of gorilla getting in there, you know what I mean? Uh, can't have that, gotta have reliable, reliable, reliable. And recently, some of you have seen that I put a crossfire on my Acro B light tester, which is probably the best flying whoop that I've encountered to date. So I'm telling you guys, you wanna pick one of those up. Um, and that is great, but it is still lacking a little bit in video because it only has a 25 milliwatt transmitter. Anyway, I put a lot of thought into this project over the last, oh, maybe bare minimum six months. And I'm going to go a little bit different route. This is going to be a 75 millimeter, not a 65 millimeter. So technically it is a little bit bigger than a whoop and I... I guess it's not exactly a tiny whoop anymore, uh, but that's okay because we're going for long range and we're going for reliability. Whew. All right, with all of that off my chest, why don't we take a look at some of these parts and that's what we're gonna do in today's video. We're just gonna do an overview of what I'm actually gonna put into this build. I'm not gonna actually do a real detailed build video because honestly, I don't even know how this thing's gonna go together yet and I really just, I can't do it on camera because I don't know what I'm doing. But once it's together, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna explain to you guys what I did that's kinda special and different, and then we'll have some flight footage at that point as well. But today is about the parts and getting this thing together. So, without further ado, let's take a look at some of these pieces and go over why this build is gonna be a little bit different and special. Oh, one more thing worth mentioning, this is based off of the new Beta FPV 75X platform, so most of that running gear is very consistent as to what you would find in that quad. Um, so I'm really not going to get into like the super specific details of everything, I'm just going to show you what's going into this build and maybe a little explanation as to why I'm using it. Okay, parts! First, let's get the frame up real quick. This is a stock frame. You can see it's this transparent white looking color and it's fine, but we don't do things stock. That's just simply not how we roll around here. So I put this one in the pot for almost eight hours yesterday and I got this awesome, awesome, super deep, rich black color in my frame. I think that looks pretty nice. Here's a comparison of the two. So you can see I've got the totally stock colored frame right out of the package. And then I've got mine that's been about eight hours in the soup. Love me the tiny soup. All right, that's the frame. Uh, Beta FPV 75X stock frame. Let's take a quick peek at the flight controller. Again, Beta FPV, that's where most of this gear is coming from. This is their new 2S brushless flight controller and ESC. It's a kind of an all-in-one, but a combo unit. It is possible to separate them. If you just give a little wiggle, 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 as you can see as I'm wiggling, and they will come apart. I don't think I'm going to completely take them apart right now, because I don't have to, but you get the gist of it. It's pretty sweet. Comes stock with an XT30 cable. What else could you ask for? Uh, F4 processor, uh, full UART, uh, smart audio, this thing's got all the bells and whistles, also OSD, gotta have OSD on long range, no doubt about it, gotta keep an eye on the batteries. Next, I got some motors, again from Beta FPV. Look at these little guys, woohoo! Whoops, I dropped it, that's how small it is. Alright, so these are the Beta FPV 1103, uh, what are they, 11,000 kV. 
1.5 millimeter shaft so you either need uh, the special beta FPV props I'm gonna rock these pinkies uh, these do have a hole for 1.5 millimeter shaft or if you have other 40 millimeter props you can always drill that hole out uh, be careful if you're drilling prop holes I think I'm gonna do a video on that in the future to show you how you can use almost any what prop on any motor but whatever that's down the road so tiny little motors pink props cool stuff Next, we've got the batteries. I've already popped them out of here. Uh, so you can see the packaging they come in. All the new X-Series uh, Betaflight stuff comes in these same boxes. But here's the batteries. Uh, 2S, 350 milliamp. I don't know, they're rated at 3570C. I have no idea what that means on these things. We're just going to try them. What's positive is these batteries fit in the frame good. They're 350 milliamp, and they have an XT30. That's why I have them. So we're going to try them. All right. So that's pretty much all the standard running gear. Let's get into some of the things as to why this is going to be special. First up, number one item, Serious Toys from Team Black Sheep. This is a Crossfire Nano Receiver, and I'm going to slide it out of here really quick like. We'll take a peek at it so you can see how small it really is. So you get your standard antenna, which is actually perfect for this type of build. I'm going to wrap it around the duct, and you'll see how I'm going to do that. It actually comes out pretty slick. We've got the actual receiver here. These new crossfires are so small, and honestly, with the reduction in price, there's really no reason to not be buying these and putting them in everything. I mean, look at how little this thing is. I mean, that's seriously tiny. Look at it. Here's a prop nut for comparison. Let's get two prop nuts. <laughs> two prop nuts for comparison. Look at that's the length on that. Two prop nuts long. That's the size of a Crossfire Nano. Uh, but anyway, they give you a little bit of wire and some heat shrink and stuff, and they kind of give you everything you need to install this. That's pretty cool. So Crossfire, all the things, all the time. That's my new motto. Let's see. Let's get into the video system. So Runcam Nano. I've never tried one of these. Uh, to date, Runcam has been my favorite, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I recently purchased a couple of the Falcors with the Black Friday sales, so I'm really curious to try those. But in a tiny micro build, this is probably one of the better options I've seen so far. Uh, I'm just hoping that it's going to have at least the quality of a Runcam Swift. If it does, I think that's going to be pretty good for one of these little buggers. Um, but appealing features are the huge camera lens and the larger sensor as opposed to most whoop size cameras. So I'm kind of curious. I hope the video quality is really good on this. Okay, getting into video transmission. Again, another kind of special item here. This is the ready-made RC Nano Cricket. And well, let's just go over what it comes with here. So you get some instructions. You get a couple of uh, MMCX pigtails, you get a dive hole, and you also get, looks like a SMA connector for your standard antennas. That's great, but we're not using any of these. I'm going to show you why in a second here. Let's pop this baby open. Super, super small. Let's get the prop nuts out for size. And look at this. This video transmitter is legit less than two prop nuts long. Look at how this thing is so tiny. I mean, just look at my thumb for comparison. I have small girl hands, and it's it's like the size of my thumbnail. Okay, anyway, uh, 200 milliwatt VTX. I think that's what the doctor ordered, especially for a whoop. This is the smallest video transmitter I could find with the highest output. However, I don't think having more wattage in a whoop is necessarily a good thing because video transmitters produce a lot of heat and I'm worried about the heat being in such close proximity to the rest of the electronics. Hopefully this 200 milliwatt unit's going to be okay. Now here's the trick with it and this is where things are going to be done a little bit differently. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the MMCX connector on here for a couple reasons. Uh, it's a little big and bulky. It adds weight 
I bet you this little guy could almost, well, it's probably not a gram, but whatever. I don't want it on there because it's bulky and it's in my way. I'm going to desolder it and I'm going to solder my antenna directly onto this connector and we're going to go with the classic mullet mod. I'm actually kind of excited for this VTX. I hope the performance in it is excellent. And probably one of the last exciting things to take a look at here, and this is actually pretty neat. This is one of the new Lumineer micro axes. I'm, if I can get it out here, this thing is so little. So this is the new Lumineer micro axe. This thing is super, super tiny. Look at the diameter of the antenna itself is just slightly larger than a prop nut. And if you look at this in relation to scale with the frame, I'll grab the white frame so there's contrast and you can see. But look at this is absolutely perfect. There's a spot on the frame here where you can legit zip tie your antenna. So I'm just going to hold it in place, but you can legit zip tie that there. Give it a little tweaky tweaky. And look at the size of that antenna in relation to the frame. It is absolutely perfect. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the UFL and I'm going to remove the MMCX. I'm going to direct solder that. I'm going to try to keep a little bit of length on it uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, one is it is long range. I want to be able to jack it up and try to optimize the range from the antenna. But also with it being direct soldered, if it crashes and it breaks at the solder joint, I want to have enough left over so I can cut it and re-solder it again if I need to. Oh, yeah, one more thing. The canopy. So originally, I was going to use the Blade Indructrix Plus canopy. I thought it was going to look cool, you know, a little bit different style. And I also thought that I was going to have enough room on the back side of the canopy here in order to put the Crossfire race antenna. I just, I thought it would be an optimal place to install it. However, after receiving this canopy, the antenna is not going to fit the way that I wanted it. Also, with the way the camera mounts, the run cam is much larger than most standard micro cameras and I just, I don't think it's going to fit in here the way that I want it to and I think it's going to be just a lot of work in order to make this canopy go in there and have it look halfway decent. So I don't think I'm going to use it. Instead, what I have is last night I cleaned up a stock Beta FPV canopy. It's Look at it, it's still blue on the inside. <laughs> um, but I gave this a super sexy, oh, this metallic gunmetal. I don't know if the video is even going to give this paint justice, but I'm going to wiggle it and maybe you can see some of the shimmer in it. Uh, so anyway, I gave it this metallic gunmetal and just buried it in a mountain of clear. And this thing is gorgeous. Oh, it looks so sexy. But I think it is going to look just great on the black frame. And let's take a little peek here as to what this is going to look like. So the black frame with some pink props in there and the gunmetal canopy. Huh? You see where I'm headed with this? You see? Look at that. What do you think of that? Oh, we're going to have this, the antenna poking out the back. Oh, no, that's not going to. Look at that mock-up, right? Come on. Is that a sexy little beast or is that a sexy little beast? So there you have it. There's the overview of parts for my long-range whoop. I have no idea how this is going to work out. It's going to be just as much for a surprise for me as it is for you. But, you know, that's part of the adventure. Anybody who's been watching for a while, I think you're going to realize, or maybe you've noticed, that we don't do things the normal way around here. We do it our way, and we do it the way we want, and that's okay, right? Um, and that's how we have unique, awesome stuff, and that's probably why you're watching. Um, but that's how I do it. Don't, don't be normal. Dare to be bold and different. Life will be good. But anyway, uh, it's time to wrap this up. Parts overview, blah, blah, blah. That's pretty fantastic. Um, I'm going to roll you out with a little bit of a build montage as I put some of the basic stuff together. Got to have at least a screwdriver or two in here. I mean, you know what I mean? Um, okay, so this is the last time I'm going to say it. That's it.
If you guys can, check out my sponsor, Hot Dog FPV at hotdogfpv.com. I love those guys. They make some awesome stuff, which, of course, you can get some Derek and his drone swag. My favorite. But of course it is, right? All right, I'm done yakking. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Enjoy the montage. Uh, and